about gravitational energy, that when something's moving up or down, you can use gravitational energy. The thing is, when things are moving very high on the Earth, you cannot use the formula mgh. So we have a very different way of calculating the energy and work for things that are moving up into orbit or into space. And the formula you may have seen is that the gravitational energy is negative gmm over r. And there's a negative there. And it's going to make this a little bit confusing, so I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. I have my diagram over here. And this is the analogy I like to look at every time I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing, because this seems to help me. I've got a well here. And at the bottom of the well is a bird, a chicken or something. And I'm looking at the energy of that chicken, and I've got a formula that gives me a negative number. So instead of having complex numbers, I'm going to keep it really simple and say, when the chicken is up here, it has zero joules. When the chicken is here, I calculate negative GMM over R, and it has negative 20 joules. And when the chicken is at this height, which is right at that level there, it has negative 50 joules. And that way, you know, I can think about it the way I thought about stuff with the roller coasters and energy and kinetic energy going up and down. For instance, if the, tur if the chicken has negative 50 joules here and I want to get it to there, I have to add 30 joules. If I add 30 joules to that 50, I'll have negative 20, the chicken will end up there. If I want the chicken to come right out of the well, then what i got to do is i got to say, well, if energy is negative 50, the energy level at there, which, will, which is infinity for these type of problems, is zero. So if I add 50 joules, if I do 50 joules worth of work on this chicken, it'll end up at that height. If I add 50 joules of kinetic energy, it'll end up at that height. If I add 30, well, it'll only end up at this height. If I get the chicken up to there and I say, well, how much do I need to get it out? Well, I add another 20 and that gets me back down to zero. Okay? So let's look at it with more complex numbers. Here's my formula, negative GMM over R. Here's the Earth. I want to take an object here on the surface of the Earth and move it up to here, 7 times 10 to the 6 meters from the center of the Earth. Okay? I'm putting it up there, and it's going to fall back down to Earth. It is not in orbit. That's why I made a big note here, not in orbit. If it's in orbit around the Earth, that changes how we do it. You've got to look at the other parts of this video. But right now, I'm just going to take it from here up to there. Well, that's like going from maybe here to here. I, if I know the energy here is negative 50, and I know the energy there is negative 20, I know the difference between these two is 30. I have to add 30 joules to get from there to there. So that's the same sort of thing I want to do here. How much energy does it have here? How much energy does it have here? And how much do I have to add to this to get to this? It will be a positive number because I'm adding it. And uh, it will get me from there to there. I want to point out that the total energy of this object is its kinetic plus gravity. And in this case, because it's not in orbit, and when it's on the surface of the Earth, it's just sitting there, um, my total energy will just be the gravitational. So it makes it fairly simple. So question A, how much work do I have to do to get the object to go from here to here? Well, that's like saying how much work do I have to do to get the object to go from here to here? I need to know how much energy it has here. I need to know how much energy it has there. And I need to find how much I have to add to this to get to that. So let's do that. A, calculating the work done. I need to know how much energy it has here. The energy at A is equal to negative G M M over R. G is a gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. This is the mass of the Earth. This is the mass of the satellite or object, which is 50 kilograms. And this is the distance at that point. And that would be the radius of the Earth. Because that's the, how far I am from the center of the Earth. If you plug into that, you're going to have to do it several times because frequently it doesn't work quite uh, well in your calculator. But if you find the gravitational energy at A, it's going to be 3.1 times 10 to the 9 joules. If I want to find the gravitational energy at B, I use the same formula, but it's a different R. Now it's the distance from the center of the Earth to where the object is. So it's a bigger R, it's going to be a smaller number. So I've got uh, negative G times the mass of the Earth times the mass of the object divided by a different R, and I get negative 2.9 times 10 to the 9 joules. Try to calculate and see if you get those two numbers. Well, I've got to find the difference between those two numbers to figure out how much work I did. Okay? 
Well, the work is the change in the total energy. And as I said, the total energy is kinetic plus gravity, but we don't have kinetic. So this happens to be the total energy at that point. This happens to be the total energy at that point. So the total energy difference is the gravitational at B minus the gravitational at A. So I get um, B negative 2.9 times 10 to the 9 minus negative 3.1 times 10 to the 9. You've got to keep track of your positives and negatives or it's not going to work out. It has to work out to a positive number and I get uh, 2.7 times 10 to the 8 joules. So we calculate this, we calculate that, we find the difference between the two just like I did here. I have to add 2.7 times 10 to the 8 joules to get from this number to that number, and it's positive. Okay, second question. What's, uh, how much kinetic energy? This is not what is its kinetic energy here. It's how much kinetic energy do I have to give this object to get it to go up to there? It's like the bird. If I throw the bird up in the air, how much kinetic energy must I give it to get it to go up to that height? So here's an object on the surface of the Earth. If I threw it up in one shot, how much kinetic energy must I give it? Keep in mind, on the Earth, that really wouldn't work because of the air resistance, okay? So, for part B, I need to find the kinetic energy. Well, I need to give this thing 2.7 times 10 to the 8 joules to get to this height. So if I gave it to it in terms of kinetic energy, it would move to that height, stop, and fall back to Earth. Because remember, it's not in orbit. You have to look at some uh, other part of the video to find that. So the kinetic energy is easy. That's how much I have to add. 2.7 times 10 to the 8 joules. Part C, how fast would it have to be going? Well, whenever you're asked how fast that something needs to be going, when you're dealing with energy, all you need to know is the kinetic energy. I know the kinetic energy is 2.7 times 10 to the 8. So I really do know the velocity, I just got to plug it in. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So 2.7 times 10 to the 8 equals 1 half, and my mass, well this is the mass I'm throwing up into the air. So 50 v squared, v ends up being 3,286 meters per second, okay? And then you might need to round that off depending on